So I have wanted to make a new video for about 10,000 years and I couldn't think for the life of me for of a topic to make. And every time I thought about making a new video I thought, oh this would be so good and I feel this wonderful feeling of, of purpose wash over me and, and so on. But then for whatever reason I just put it off and I put it off and I put it off and I'm sat here right now um, and yeah, I think now is the right time and I, I've got a topic. Um, I think as I've said in previous videos, I sort of start them with ideas, I think I've said this, that I start them with ideas of what I want to talk about and, um, but, with it, well, but without any particular framework. Um, sometimes maybe a few notes, that kind of thing. But the thing I want to talk about today was, or rather is, blips, or sometimes what I call them, blipples, or whatever. And I found in the last maybe week, less than, I have experienced a sort of BDE blip. And I don't know, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I've, a lot of stuff has been happening. I've been working in a nursery. Um, I passed, I finished my degree um, a few months ago and I had a really lovely summer and, and BDE has, has sort of faded and faded and faded from, from my life more and more, which is fantastic. But I think that's probably why this blipple is more uh, unnerving because it's just, it's sort of, I think it, it makes you think to yourself, well, why? Why now? Why has this come out of nowhere? Why is this happening? Uh, surely I'm beyond this. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I felt so good about my appearance and about my life in general. So, again, I use the word purpose, purposeful. You know, I, I've had some incredible friendships develop over the summer and in, in the recent past. I've had some wonderful experiences. And, you know, I find a great deal of worth coming from the work that I do at the minute while looking for, for further graduate related work. But nonetheless, in the last couple of days, I guess I've had a lot, of, well, I have had a lot of time to think about where this feeling and sensation comes from. And of course, part of it is because I'm very tired. Uh, I've got a bit of a bad neck and things like that. But, um, but also because, um, well, I, I guess it gives you time to reflect on the things that maybe have occurred in recent times um, and maybe this network in my head of, of, of why uh, is, is partially correct or maybe even entirely incorrect but it as I've sp spoken with my sister before these kind of these things they sort of if you can't understand where they come from maybe you don't need to maybe you just need to deal with deal with them learn how to deal with them and, and learn that it's okay to have recurrences and I, I hate the word relapse because relapse remind, makes me think of excuse me, makes me think of almost a complete restart. And life is, you know, life is not like that. You know, you can never go back to, to unlearning all the tricks and, and, and insights that you've learned along the way. And I know that will never happen. You know, I will always have my, um, excuse me, I just adjust the screen. Um, I will always have the things I picked up along the way and so on. But I thought I would start by, and the number one thing I try not to do amongst other things, several things is I try not to reassure and seek. Uh, I think it's something I've always been very good at, not being the best at checking um, or comparing myself to other people, but I'm very good at, n at not saying, you know, what do you think of this? Do you think this looks okay? That kind of thing. But there have been several examples recently where people who don't have body dysmorphia, friends of mine have said, I think you'll be able to help me with this. I'm feeling this way about whatever it is about their appearance. What do you think? And in that moment, I will say to them, I can't see what you're saying. You know, like I don't see the problem that you, you're coming up with and I think that's that's so inspiring because it you know you say okay you're talking about for example your hair this person and I will say but to me it looks fine and I think that's so great because there are so many times where I've done that and I thought now what I was what I was getting what I'm getting back to is I'll talk about what's been irritating me the last little while one thing you probably can see very clearly is that this is very very long why because why not and it started off being a a challenge when I was very unwell because I thought if I can just grow it out then you know and get past the awkward stages it's it's a wonderful example of how I can overcome that anxiety and just push through and I did and great it's very long here it is um, but one of the things that always used to set me off was the idea of a haircut and one of the things that's really that, that comes back uh, has done for a, for a couple of years now is that very understandable ingrained male fear from our society of hair loss oh and I think like I was saying when I spoke to my friends and they said to me and that's why I was thinking I can't see what you're worried about I don't think many people would look at this and think oh yes Andrew you're clearly suffering from hair loss 
my fear, and I'm sure it's a, a mixture of societal and VDD, is what if my hair goes? What if it just, you know, what if I start to lose it? And, you know, and I, I'll check my hairline, not very much, not as much as I used to, and I suppose there's a normal amount of that in most males. But I've been doing it a little bit this week and worrying about, oh my goodness, what if, because you know, I, I receive a lot of compliments on the way I look. And it's, it's very nice. I try not to internalize them too much because I realize there's more <laughs> to me than that. But I think it's, it's when you start feeling really positive about something, you fear about losing it. I guess that makes normal sense. Normal sense? Sense. To anyone. Also, interestingly, I had my sister took a, a video of me recently uh, from this side. And I was just talking away, blah, 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 blah. And I've always had a bit of a thing about this side of my face because, and I'm sure you've noticed, this nostril's slightly bigger than this one. I know what you're thinking. How could I not have noticed that before? <laughs> um, but it's very strange because these things that don't matter, they really don't. But in a moment, just a moment, an image that captures your attention, you think, oh, I didn't realise this was here. And what about this? And what about it makes everything here? And what about this? this? And what about all this? And what about all these bits up here? Oh, you know, look at this here. Oh, what does this mean? Or is it just the way that it goes up? Or is it is there less of it here or more? Or is it the way it folds over? Or I don't know what's over here. I don't, is, is this the same size? Is it different? Is it whatever it is? And you realise how much that just made me anxious doing that. <laughs> but I suppose all of that, facing that fear, realising that it's in your head, realising that it's now out there and also perhaps most importantly realising that it will fade, that it always fades um, and that so many other people are experiencing the same thing but with different aspects of their body, about their lives. My dad once said, and I realise I do a lot of quotes from other people, but my dad once said to me, you'd be surprised that so many people have so many problems and I think it's very important to own the fact first and foremost that that doesn't diminish the importance of your problems because suffering is is relative to each and every one of us. You know, we all uh, we deal with things in different ways. You know, we experience things in different ways. But I suppose what I'm saying is, even though I'm sat in this sort of blip phase now, you know, I, I'm very conscious of a few things, or perhaps maybe not as conscious as I would have been a few years ago, and not as catastrophically. I'm not thinking as in a, such a catastrophizing black and white, all or nothing way, I'm taking all the boxes there with all the things, you know, than I, than I used to, it's still, I feel, I'm uncomfortable because I've, I don't, I haven't felt this way in a while, and I don't want to be here, it's not nice, it's not pleasant, you know, I, I just, yeah, well, saying all of this, I think what I'm trying to get at is that it's okay, because it will pass, and it does pass, and I think I'm stuck now thinking, I'm not stuck, but I'm, I'm in a position now thinking, but what if it doesn't, what if it's not the same as it was? And I've thought that a thousand times before, and my head has said to me, this kind of like lurking feeling, it says, well, it might not be, but it is, and it does. And I had such a wonderful, you know, with that in mind, I had such a wonderful feeling of relief, possibly, as, as, I think it was as late as last night. I was just lying in bed, and I was thinking about a few things, as tends to always happen, and I was thinking, what if the problem, and I remember, I used to think this all the time, but I'd just forgotten. What if the problem isn't my appearance? What if it's the way I think about it? And that one just knocked me off my feet, even though I was lying down. But, you know, it really, it, it threw me. I was thinking, oh, yeah, because I highly doubt people are looking at my nose, my nostril, as opposed to this nostril. I'm thinking, good God, that's hideous. In the same way that if I walk past someone on the street who is bold or balding, I don't go, good Lord, look at that person. Not at all. I mean... Certain things are going to trigger you in certain ways, especially if things are on your mind. But I suppose it's important to consider that we're all going to have fears, justified or not. And you know, I, for the longest time, I've told myself, I, you know, I've been I've been doing application forms for jobs and ticking. No, I don't have a disability, but in a way, I do. I suppose you know, I have a latent mental health problem that very rarely, ninety nine percent of the time, typically, doesn't cause me an issue when I'm busy, when I'm engaged with things, when I'm experiencing and enjoying life but sometimes it does and sometimes these little blips come up and they really knock me for six but that's okay you know that's life and I suppose it's it's about a, it's, it gives you an opportunity to refocus and think to yourself well actually what is it that I want to to, to make of all of this and you know, what do I want to take from this I think foremost and I, I've been saying a lot to myself recently that it's about experience not appearance and purpose not appearance you know doing things that make me feel better and I realized I said I'm working in a nursery 
the feeling I get while working there is so much better, so much deeper than the feeling I will get when I think, oh, I look quite nice, or someone gives me a compliment. That's like a tingle of, ooh, but when I think I'm making a difference, I'm doing something important that I feel passionate about, and moving forward and, and doing good things, or you know, whatever it is, at work or otherwise, that is such a deeper feeling. Like I feel it in my heart, in my chest, and all the cliches are there. But still, it's that's something to keep in mind. And then, I, I mean, I don't think, to, to quote a friend of mine, once again, to quote a friend of mine, she said to me once, you know, it's okay to let yourself shine a little bit. And I think that's, you know, it's, it's important to think, you know, I feel quite good about myself. But I don't want it, I think it's very important for me, and perhaps for some of you who have this illness that are watching these videos, who still are, um, to know that, you know, actually there's more to you. There is so much more, and it doesn't have to date precedent, this feeling of, Appearance. We, we're, we're so trapped in this horrible nightmare society in areas, I don't want to catastrophize, but you know, areas of our society that focus and over focus on appearance and put so much value on these things. I mean, I was thinking recently how in my head, you know, when I, when I was looking at my appearance in this mirror and I was, I was, you know, I used a mirror to look at the side of my face and this and that, I was thinking, I like this side of my face quite a lot. No real issues with that, but this side. And what if, in my head, I was thinking, what if from one angle somebody sees this bit, sees me smile and sees everything, oh, and I, I felt like the Grand High Witch from the film The Witches, I believe it's called. And of course that's ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous, but in that moment it feels very real and feels very frightening and reminds me of all those horrible feelings when I was at my worst. And it feels very believable. And I was thinking, you know, what if that makes somebody go, you're not attractive? And I realised that's insane. That's completely ridiculous. That people, number one, don't think like that. I don't think like that. I've had therapy where people have sat down and looked at pictures of me that have been recorded and my therapist has asked them questions and they said, well, no, I don't think A, B and C. Shown me that people don't think this kind of way. And yet in my head, my body dysmorphia is making me think, well, that's out then. I mean, I don't walk past people who might be considered conventionally unattractive and think, oh, you hideous monster. Of course I don't. It's just my previous experiences with you know, with, with my body image and so on and difficult memories and all these things and other factors like whether I'm hungry or tired or sleep, you know, all this stuff I say sleep deprived but that is tired whatever it is these biological things have a huge effect and I realise it's almost well, it's over 12 and a half minutes I've been recording this now so to bring it all back round together and conclude it is okay to be unwell it's okay to have ooh, it's important to not catastrophize and think this is it I'm going back to the beginning because even if things do slip a bit, or even considerably, it doesn't mean that you can't build yourself back up, whether you know by yourself or with help. And you know, I've, I've reached out to some friends in the last couple of days and just talked. And I find that talking is so good. I mean, I had a colleague say to me, "Have you considered this?" And she gave me a perspective on my life at the minute. And you know, as I said, it may not be entirely accurate of how I'm thinking or the, the exact cause, but for whatever reason, it took so much. I felt the weight lift off my shoulders, and I'm thinking, I hadn't considered that. And that's what it's all about, considering alternatives and looking at other directions and I don't know other opinions. And you know, as I said, it's difficult you, know, you don't want to, to reassurance seek about things necessarily. In some ways, you know, you know, do I look okay like this? But rather thinking, do you think I should be sh sort of thinking like this? You know, do what do you think? How do you think I should approach this? I think that's better because it broadens it, it focuses back on this idea, as I said earlier, of what if it's not your appearance that's the problem? What if it's the way that you're thinking?